Hello everyone, the Snowman here. We've got one last game on the European football calendar this season. It's the UEFA Champions League final. Just two teams remain, Manchester City and the Challengers from Milan. Should be an incredible final in Istanbul on June 10th. Right now I want to look at how each team got to the final, analyze the matchup a bit, uh, see which team is stronger in different areas, and pick a winner. Let's start off by looking at how each team made it to the final, starting with Inter Milan. Super difficult group draw with Bayern Munich and Barcelona, also the fourth team Victoria Pilsen. Uh, two defeats to Munich, but the key fixtures were the pair against Barca, a thrilling 3-3 draw at Camp Nou, and a pivotal 1-0 victory in Milan. Hakan Chalhanoglu netting the winner there to help his club eventually finished second in the group. In the round of 16, Inter faced the reigning Portuguese champs Porto. They dismissed them 1-0 on aggregate with Belgian star Romelu Lukaku scoring the game winner in that tie. The quarterfinal matchup against the likely 2023 Portuguese champs Benfica was never really in doubt despite the final scoreline. Inter controlling proceedings with their midfield en route to that 5-3 final score. And in the semis, the Milan derby, a special kind of encounter versus the team that shares the San Siro with them, AC Milan. I was so impressed by Inter's poise and defensive structure during those two legs. Very opportunistic early on in the first leg and then businesslike and professional to see out the result. A little bit of revenge for the Champions League defeats to Milan in 03 and 05 and Inter's heating up at the right time. They've currently won eight matches in a row across all competitions into the final of the Coppa Italia and sitting in third place in the Serie A table at the moment. Then we have the heavy favorites Manchester City and their path to Istanbul. Smooth sailing all the way through in a group that featured Borussia Dortmund, Sevilla, and Copenhagen. City began their campaign with a bang, a 4-0 road win in Seville, a comeback win against Dortmund on match day two, opened up the floodgates, and there was no looking back for City undefeated in group play. The beatdowns continued for Manchester opponents in the knockout round, two German foes in the round of 16 and quarters. Against Leipzig, it was a historic 7-0 domination in the second leg, Erling Haaland scoring an incredible five goals that day. City flexed its muscles some more in the quarterfinals, showing they're too classy for even the mighty Bavarians of Munich, a 3-0 victory to open up that tie. And against the defending champions, Real Madrid in the semis, more of the same, absolute supremacy by City. 5-1 on aggregate over Madrid, kept them under siege for 180 minutes. Bernardo Silva with some exquisite play on the right wing. He scored a couple of times to put Madrid away. So Manchester so close now to the first Champions League title in club history. They've been one of the best in the world the last decade. Another soon-to-be Premier League title this season. They're into the FA Cup final against rivals Man United on June 4th. More space in the trophy cabinet being freed up, but can they finally get it done in the Champions League? That's the million dollar question. In terms of the lineups, this was Inter's most recent lineup against AC Milan in the semis, that 3-5-2 or 5-3-2 formation with the wingbacks and Dumfries and DeMarco. The strength of the team, definitely the midfield trio of Barella, Chalhanoglu, and Mkhitaryan, especially the two-way ability of Barella to get up and support the strikers, score goals, but also track back and be the real engine in the middle for Inter. Ed and Dzeko aging like fine wine at 37, still scoring goals. And Lazaro Martinez, the other forward, he closed the door shut on Milan in the second leg. Martinez aiming to join an impressive list of players to win the World Cup and the Champions League in the same season. Uh, most recently, Rafael Varane in 2018, Kadira in 2014, Roberto Carlos in 2002. Julian Alvarez for City, also eligible for that distinction. City's lineup for the final should be a mouthwatering one. This is how they looked against Madrid in the semis, somewhat of a 3-2-4-1 or a 4-3-3, depending on the situation. Such a dangerous front three with the unstoppable Holland in the middle. Grealish and Silva on the wings, providing service for the Norwegian. Holland with 36 goals in the Premier League. That's the most in an EPL season all time. He's got 12 more to lead goal scorers in the Champions League. Kevin De Bruyne, electric as well, and they're so strong in the back. Ruben Diaz, world-class. Kyle Walker, among the fastest fullbacks in the world. Ederson in the net, can have nothing to do for 70 
minutes and then spring into action and make clutch saves. So it's as complete a lineup as you'll see in Europe. Let's move on to the tail of the tape now. We've got seven distinct categories where we'll analyze which team has the advantage in starting with defense. I've got City here. They have the better defensive record in league play this season. They've conceded just five goals in 12 Champions League games compared to Inter's 10. I mentioned the confidence I have in Ederson in that defensive line. They'll be the less tired defense of the two, likely having the lion's share of possession in this final. Their defense has less cracks at the moment. Midfield, I think it's a push. I know how well City's group has been playing. De Bruyne still as world class as it gets, picking out passes in the final third. Gundogan and Rodri in fine form too, but there's a real industrialism with Inter's midfield. I mentioned how much ground Barella can cover. They have the creativity as well with Shalhanoglu and Mkhitaryan. I look for those three to spring the counterattack in this matchup. In terms of attack, it's an easy choice. Dzeko, Martinez, and Lukaku are all match winners on the right day, but Erling Haaland is a game breaker seemingly every game he plays this year. Too physical, too smart, too much poise in the box. He's breaking records left and right. Man City has so much depth on the wings too. Uh, Guardiola can bring on guys like Mares and Foden late in the game when the Inter legs get heavy. Current form just barely goes to City. Yes, Inter on an eight-match win streak, but City has gone 23 games without a defeat. They last lost to Tottenham on February 5th. I like that they've been in a tight title race with Arsenal. That's kept City's form really sharp the last few months. Great news for the neutral fans. No major injuries for either club as of now. Usually it's the healthiest teams that make it through to the end, and both Inter and City should be fielding their best possible 11s on June 10th. Coaching and tactics advantage goes to Pep Guardiola and City. There's a reason he's about to win his fifth Premier League title alongside his uh, three Bundesliga trophies, three La Ligas, and two Champions Leagues. He's seen everything you could ever see on a football pitch. This is a huge legacy match for Pep. On the flip side, Simone Inzaghi, not as many accolades. Uh, tactically, he favors the 3-5-2 like many Italian managers. This is the biggest game that he's ever coached in. Finally, we get to experience a really tough category to decide as it's pretty even. Uh, for Inter, you have guys like Dzeko, Brozovic, and Acerbi. Lataro Martinez just played in the World Cup final a handful of months ago, so they definitely have enough guys who've played in massive games, but so do City. A little younger in the back, but I have so much confidence in the leadership abilities of Gundogan and De Bruyne, players who've uh, also played Champions League finals, World Cup finals, and semis. A lot is being made over Holland's lack of experience, but I personally don't think he's going to be intimidated even a little bit. Overall, it's definitely Man City's final to lose, but they have all the pressure. All the history and demons will be against them. Uh, they have a chance to quiet all the critics and put those demons to rest. They're the better side. They should win. Part of me thinks Inter has a chance, but the odds have City as a minus 25 favorite. That's about an 81% chance to win. I think it's finally time for Manchester City to be crowned champions of Europe. 2-0 is my prediction. Inter holds on for as long as they can, but eventually the dam breaks and City caps an incredible season in style. Thanks a lot for watching my UEFA Champions League preview video. Please leave a comment. Let me know who you've got winning it all. If you enjoyed it, uh, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the Snowman Sports Media where I've got loads more uh, soccer and football preview videos, informational content coming your way. Cheers.